Hey there. So ever since I uploaded my corn upgrade video, I've been seeing some requests for a ZMK tutorial. And while I'm not a ZMK expert, I can at least show you the basics and show you how I configured my corn as well as my current key map. So let's get to it. All right. So I'll put in a browser and go to type or active type or active. There we go. Okay. You're going to go to their website. We're going to go to help documentation. I think it's build guides, corn wireless, firmware. All right. So here, as you can see, they have a base firmware that has like default key maps. So if you're happy with this key map already, all you have to do is download the left and right sides, depending if you have the nice view screens or not. Um, you download them and then you add, uh, run the firmware onto the keyboard. I'll show you how to do that at the very end. But if you want to customize this key map, then I suggest doing this instead. So we're going to build our own firmware. All right. In my case, I have a six column corn with nice views. So I'm going to click on the repository. Cool. So this is basically that base key map. Okay. But now what we're going to do is we're going to use this template to create a new repository. You do need a GitHub account. I created one just for this. Um, so we're gonna call this uh, corn config. Corn config. Cool. All right, so now that we have this config, now we're going to go to this key map editor. And what's nice about this key map editor is it basically allows you to edit your key map as opposed to having to go through and edit it through um, like a text editor instead. Because I think the way it would typically work is, let me see. you would typically have to go to the config file, corn key map, and then through this text editor, make the adjustments. So instead of going through and editing it through the text editor, what you would do is you would go through this uh, key map editor, which is really nice because it serves as a GUI where you can kind of go through and change the keys on their own and it'll update your config uh, so that you can download it and not have to use a text editor to make your changes. So in my case, this is my actual current key map. I'm going to show you how you would import your repository uh, from GitHub onto here. So we're going to go and add or remove repositories. I'm going to sign in. And this is going to look kind of similar to like when you do it the first time. All right, so I'm going to select which repositories I want to add. And we're going to do, hey, it's Pete, corn config. And now you can see I have the one I did earlier and the corn config. I'm going to hit save. All right. So like I said, this is my current key map. And this is the one I just added. So as you can tell, this is a very basic layout. It looks pretty much identical to this default key map here. And so what you would do is you would make changes. Like for example, let's say you want to change this tab to something else. The behavior is a key press and you would just change the key code to, let's say you want this to be escape. So you would just type in escape and there you go. And now it's escape. You would then hit save. This would go through to GitHub. It would compile and then give you a new firmware that you can use to flash onto your keyboard. All right. So now instead of going through and changing each um, each layer and each key press one by one at a time, I'm gonna kind of show you what I did to my specific uh, key map and kind of explain why I did it and show you how you could do it as well. 
some of these behaviors are going to make more sense than others. So you'll need some explaining on some of them. So let's look at my key map. All right, so let's start with my default layer. My default layer pretty much consists of all of my alpha keys. Since we're on a 42 key board, obviously all of our keys aren't gonna fit on here. So we need additional layers for our numbers, symbols, directions, uh, special characters, all that good stuff. Uh, so like I said, here you, see, you can see I have all my alphas. Uh, on my left thumb, I have my shift. On my right thumb, I have space. My left uh, key here is my uh, my layer key. So when I'm holding it, it goes to layer one. When I'm holding this, it goes to layer two. There's nothing too special about this layer in particular, with the exception to home row mods. So what's a home row mod? So a home row mod is a custom behavior. And when I say custom behavior, uh, when you go here, this has uh, ZMK has a whole bunch of behaviors already built into them that you can uh, that's already ready to use. But in this case, with home row mods, we had to create a behavior. In this case, I have two: home row right, home row left. And this is just a bit more of an advanced mod tap behavior in the sense that I think it's more timing based. Where unlike mod tap, you are allowed to kind of change the parameters between tapping and holding. And that makes, and it, that makes all of the difference. Uh, with mod tapping, I was getting a whole bunch of fa uh, false positives. With uh, ho this HMR behavior, not so much. So this is this is what allowed me to use home row mods. Um, and you can pretty much just copy my parameters and see what works for you. Uh, and when I when I was researching this, I think people preferred balanced, but I was still getting false positives with that. So I would, I, I prefer tap preferred. Anyways, so once you have those custom behaviors created, what you would do is you would then select that custom behavior and you would change the key code for holding to whatever you want it to be. So with the purpose of home roll mods, you make your home roll mods, your modifiers. So for example, if I were to press D, I would get a D. But if I hold D, I get the Windows key. With uh, S, if I hold S, I get Alt. And with A, if I hold A, I get Control. Same thing on the other side. Here's Windows, here's Alt, and here's Control. Are home row mods needed on this board? Probably not. I think home row mods are really necessary when you start going to, I think, like 38 keys and smaller. Um, but I like them. I've, I've been experimenting with them for like a month and a half, and I've really started to enjoy using them. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's up to you if you want to use your home row mods. I like it because then it frees up these keys over here to allow me to use them for other purposes. So that's that. As you can see, pretty much everything else has just the key press behavior, meaning when you press that key, you're going to get that function. So if I press T, I'm going to get T. Uh, I'm checking to see if I have anything else besides key press and HMR. And it looks like I don't. Uh, well, I mean, technically I have uh, this one here and this is the momentary layer. And like I said, this means that when I'm holding it, I'm switching to layer one, which means uh, I have to be holding that key to access this layer. In this case, I have a layer slash tap feature where again, I, if I hold it, I get to uh, go to layer two. Uh, and if I, pr and if I just tap it, I get tab. I couldn't find any other place that I like for tab, so this uh, this works well for me. All right, let's move on to my layer one. So my layer one is pretty much my special character layer and my navigation layer. So as you can see on my right side, I have all of my brackets, my arrow keys, and some navigation buttons like page up, page down. I also have some uh, OS specific commands to move stuff around. Now, my left side is my numpad. Now, this took me a really long time to get used to. Honestly, I think at this point, like a month and a half in, I'm still not fully used to it and I struggle sometimes, but I really enjoy the idea of it. So let me walk you through it. So as you can see, a lot of these are still just uh, key presses. In this case, I have my multiplication, my subtraction, my backspace, uh, backslash, forward slash, a zero. But these here 
our mod taps. And so again, this is where if I tap one, I get a one, or if I hold one, I get an exclamation point. This pretty much eliminates the need to have like two rows, one for numbers, one for symbols. And I really like it. Honestly, I think this is one of my the favorite parts of this keyboard, even though I'm not fully adjusted to it yet. It's a big change from going to having your numpad on the right to like not having a numpad at all and just using the number row to now having your numpad on the left and now adding that holding feature on the left. It's a lot to process, but I really like it. I think it's gonna pay off as I continue to use it. And setting this up again is really simple. This isn't a custom behavior. This is a behavior that already exists. You just select MT and then you do the tap, uh, what you want for tap and what you want for hold. Super simple, easy to do. I can't imagine trying to like uh, set this up on the, uh, on the text editor. I feel like that would be a total nightmare. So thank God for this. All right. Let's finish things off with my layer two. My layer two is pretty simple. I've got my function keys on top. I've got some uh, media keys, uh, previous, volume down, volume up, next, and my Bluetooth keys. Now these keys are, they're pretty important. When I first got the keyboard, I was like breaking my brain. Um, I think I accidentally hit the select Bluetooth to a different profile and I wasn't able to pair it again to my computer since it was technically already paired under a different profile. I was going nuts. Um, but essentially, you can have up to five different profiles, one per device. Uh, and if you, if you're, if, if that profile already has uh, something set to it, you have to clear it before you can use it again. So please keep that in mind. It nearly broke my brain. Uh, I have this here because uh, when I used to have it in a different layer, I think by default it's on layer one or, or maybe it is on layer two. It was just in a very inconvenient place where I was often switching to the two different profiles and then clearing my profiles too. Very frustrating. But again, uh, profile one, profile two, profile three, profile four, profile five. And then if you need a clear profile, clear it with that, uh, with that option there. In my previous configuration, I did have a layer three and I would access layer three by holding mod tap one and mod tap two and that would take me to layer three. At this point, because I'm using home row mods and because of like the room savings I have with this like number pad, I don't have a necessity for a layer three, but you do have the option to um, access layer three uh, using conditional layers. So I think that just about does it. So now that we've gone through the configuration, let's go through and save, save a configuration so that we can then push it out to our keyboard. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna make a slight change here. I'm just gonna make this left, left GUI. Technically, it doesn't really change anything. I think we should be fine, but I just wanna be able to save it to show what happens when you save um, a configuration. So I'm gonna save it. We're gonna make the, uh, add the change, modified, <clears throat> right, oops. OS key. Okay, so like I said, this sends it over to uh, GitHub for it to compile. And then once this says that it's ready, we'll be able to download it and push the configuration out to the keyboard. And if you were to click on it ahead of time, you can kind of see the work progressing. All right, so we can see the configuration is now completed. Let's pull it from the key map editor. We're gonna download it. Download firmware. And we'll just save it as firmware five. I think I have a place for it. There we go. Cool. All right, so now at this point, we can start flashing that firmware onto the keyboard. So let me change the view one sec. Okay, so now that we have the firmware, let me pull that up real quick. 
from R5, there we go. So what we're gonna do, cable connected to the one you want to update. In this case, we have the left side. We have the power slider and the reset button. You're gonna press the reset button twice. One, two. It's gonna bring up the nice nano folder. We're gonna slide over the left side. Cool, that was done. Move it over and repeat the process. One, two. Now we're doing the right side, put it over. Cool, yeah, that's it. I've seen it fail before. Uh, you just have to close it out and do it again. Sometimes you may have accidentally selected the opposite side. It's not a big deal. Cool, and with that, uh, uploading the configuration to the keyboard is uh, done. All right, well, with the configuration now on the keyboard, let's test a couple things. This is a typing test. Let's do a control A. Nice. Control Z. Perfect. Control X, control V, 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 V. Easy. All right. So our home row mods are working. Let's do a quick test. Oops. All right, could do better, but I mean, everything's working, so that's good. All right, well, you know, that's uh, pretty much it. So I hope this video helped out and uh, gives you everything you need to program your corn keyboard. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down below. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this is uh, the extent of my experience and knowledge when it comes to ZMK. So I may not be the best person to ask, but I'll do my best to help you out. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time, bye.